Welcome to another edition of Horses to Follow for KwaZulu Natal. MJ Udendal, Warren Lenferner, and Andrew Harrison welcome you to the show. The three of us are sitting at the warm clubhouse here at Sommerfeld. It's a drizzly day, it's a cold day, and a perfect day for a conversation with a legend like MJ Udendal. You'll have to wait before I talk to you, so I want to introduce MJ Udendal oh, first. Okay, I'll give you a break. Can I also say Mr. Mr. Harris is also a legend, uh, so let's not forget that. Okay. There we are. Um, that's why I love this boy. <laughs> <laughs> MJ, welcome to the show. It's wonderful to have you here. We're going to spend the next half an hour or so learning about you, hearing about you. Thanks for joining us. It's an absolute pleasure, you know. I think the more uh, transparent we are to the public and the more we can bring them in, um, I think our industry is on the up, um, especially with the, the, the COVID and the sports betting. You know, the sports betting took big time. Yes. And now that there's no crowds and stuff, I, I think people are sort of coming back to, to what they know, yes. horse racing. Absolutely, absolutely. How are you? I'm well. You're, you're, you're going away tomorrow, aren't you? Or you going no, away I had my away? COVID test and the woman really stuck a bloody thing up my nose and and uh, through the back of my head. But okay. I'm, I'm, I'll survive. Yeah. That's right. Land to Swaziland. Yeah, they're going to oh, yeah, fertilise us. fertiliser, yes. Goodness, Gray, I thought it was hailing for a moment. But yeah, yeah, yeah. you know what? One thing, uh, we do complain about the rain sometimes with the tracks and this and that. But if it wasn't for this beautiful rain... We won't have beautiful teff next year. We won't have beautiful food. So right, right, this is all, all things we need. Em, the first question, which is not on the script, but the first question I'll ask everybody is share with us and share with the viewers, how did it all start? How did racing, how did the horse, how did it all start for you? How did MJ Woodendahl hear about horse racing, being a jockey? When did, take us right back to when you were very young. It was a and hibious, man. Yeah I, was a, yeah, I was a farm boy, you know, and um, the first time my uncle, uh, uh, my uncle liked to have a flatter now and then, you know, from the farm, and, and I saw a race card with a grey horse on winning. Um, I later learned, because, you know, it was significant to me because that's where I saw this jockey and I realised, well, this is my life, you know, and I later realised that it was uh, Mr. Raymond Rhodes, who rode the horse, and the horse's name was Benny Bazooka. Um, and I saw that when I was about four years old. But uh, I got I got a dog. My gran granny had a dog called uh, Chalmers. He was a big burbo. And I got my first horse when I was three. And, and, and at that stage, I realized I have a communication with animals. You know, I... I, I I speak to them through energy, and, and, and I must say that the, out of all the animals, the clearest are the burbles and racehorses. I seem to connect to them better than anything else, except Pucky, who's by my side every day, you know what I mean? He's, he's a legend, he's probably as smart as I am. But, uh, so, so, you know, then I realized this is, I've got the connection with animals, I love animals, I've always had animals, and... Uh, by the time I was seven, eight, uh, I started trading in horses, you know. Uh, the South African polo captain, Mr. Peter Potgieter, he was the captain for the South African polo team. I bought a big grey horse from him, and uh, what I used to do is make them bomb-proof and then sell them on to other kids. Uh, but this horse was huge, and I was tiny. So the only way I could get onto him, I used to put a bit of mealies on the ground, he used to bend down, I used to climb over his ears, and when he lifted his head up, I just slid back onto the saddle, <laughs> you know. And, uh, but a very significant horse was, my first horse, Blowbook, um, and, and he actually grew, it was a Welsh pony, he actually grew to be 30 years old, and as it was, it, he was getting long in the tooth, but he was still happy, and lightning hit him, so he actually ended up in a flash, still with grass in his, in his mouth, and I think it was a good ending for him. But that's, that's where it all started. Uh, that photo of Mr. Rhodes on, on Benny Bazooka, the grey horse, I remember he had clear goggles, so I could even see his eyes. And that was me. Hooked. I didn't, didn't want to jump, I didn't want to play polo. Uh, 
I, I wanted to be a jockey. Yo, you, you lived in Amsterdam at the time. Your farm was in Amsterdam. Yes, yeah. yes. My my uh, my family comes from that side. My grandfather started there, and uh, he had a couple of farms, and then and my dad uh, had a farm, and then my late uncle's farm next to that came open, you know. And my dad said to me, "It's important if we buy, we buy onto our farm. That's you know, not you don't want to farm different sections. So this farm was bordering our farm. So." Uh, I think I was 22. I bought it, um, uh, which, which obviously uh, through the years has, has gone a bit up in value, which is great. <laughs> and then um, uh, when uh, when Pete Lemmer next to them, uh, a farm came open. When Skalk van Oetswering owned it, and he was a mega farmer. And and my dad advised me that me and him buy half of that. And then, then we also acquired the top farm. So, so my dad was running a massive, massive business with the cattle and and so on. But uh, so your dad was mayor of Amsterdam. No, my dad was no. <laughs> he, he was quite a cool dude, and um, uh, I, I wouldn't say. Well, the one day he said to the uh, to the school principal, he said to him, "Listen, he's got a cow to donate," you know. And then three days later, the, the, the principal asked him, uh, you know, that cow you spoke about? So my dad said, no, sorry, it recovered, you know. It's not, it's not sick anymore. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's... So you went from there to the Jockey Academy? No, first... So you must, please enjoy your cold drinks. This yeah, is a relaxed yeah, show. Yeah, you yeah. you uh, feel free to enjoy no, yourself. First, there, there's a guy called um, Obas de Yaha. Obas. Obas. Now, th- I think the whole world knows him. Um... I think he currently holds the South African barrel racing record. Um, I'm talking under correction with a filly I sent him called Catch Baloo. She was absolutely crazy but could run like hell for 600 meters. And uh, he's 67 years old and he holds the record. Not for seniors or anything, overall. So um, we had our own own uh, farm racing, you know, where the farmers got together, got X racehorses, and that's that's where I started, you know. And we used to go to the meetings where it was catch weight. So, so I mean, I rode with a little dock, and I weighed about eighteen kilos. So, needless to say, we had a bit of an advantage. Yeah, just, actually, just a slight advantage. Yeah. Actually, two days before I came to the uh, three days before I came to the academy on the first of. Uh, it was always on the, the, the 31st of December. We had a meeting. I had, five, uh, I had six rides, five winners. But the other one should have won too. But uh, an ex-jockey was also riding in the race. And uh, as we swung for home, that's where the railing started. And uh, he just squeezed me this side of the rail, you know. The game was good there, so I won the race, but I was disqualified. Who and, was the ex-jockey? Willem Ferreira. Oh, okay, so, so he, he was an old hand and I was a lighty, so he knew he ain't going to beat me, so, so he, he pushed you up. Yeah, yeah, he used, used tactics. Race it was riding. called race riding, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Andrew, I mean, you know, those guys that, uh, that uh, MJ is mentioning, Raymond Rhodes and, and this chap now, I mean, those are names that you remember, people that you, you know. They were good jocks, eh? They were bloody top boys. Raymond Rhodes was. Yeah, Top yeah, division. yeah. I was, you know what? I was privileged, and I think all of us were youngsters. Me, Anthony, Anton, Douglas White, uh, Stewie, Sean. We were all privileged that our biggest seniors were Mr. Rhodes, Mr. Turner, and uh, Mr. Roy Curling. Um, you know, these are uh, legends. And then just underneath them were the, the Felix could see. Jeff Lloyd, Basil Marcus, Mace Roberts, the almighty Mr. Garth Puller. And so, so it came down from them and they taught us, uh, look, there was, it was a bit different then. There was a lot of, uh, there was a lot of respect. And uh, if a lighty did something wrong, because it's a dangerous sport, you know, and, and, and we used to just close the doors. Someone used to keep chips so that there's no start. And whoever was in the wrong, they got a hiding. So straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, we sorted, we sorted things out ourselves. 
Uh, the one day I had golf puller on the rail in Cape Town. I was a young guy at Mungit and, you know, young up and coming hotshot jock and, you know, I had him on the rail tight. The guy knew exactly where the turn where the camera couldn't see it. <laughs> and and remember those days we didn't have body protectors. Okay. So the guy rode with like a proper long and he gave me three across my back, I tell you what. Number one, there were tears in my eyes because it was sore. And number two, I really d didn't want to disappoint this legend, you know. And he took me into the start room. Mr. Tillett was there. And he showed me that these were concrete rails. So, if, you know, you, if, I, if you hit one of those, you're dead. And, and, but he belted me properly. And then Mr. Tillett still said, uh, Mr. Puller, shall we take us any f further? And... Um, is, uh, Mr. Puller said, no, it's been dealt with, thank you. And, and that was it, you know. Sure. Um, that's, a, that's how we learned, you know. We, we, it was hard. And yeah, until it, till it was a, was we, a, was we all a got mean a good stopper. couple of hidings. Yeah. It was hard, but you learned. But we learned, and you know what? Because we had so much respect for these guys, they helped us in us, our riding, you know, which which flew over. I mean, in our era, there was a lot of top jockeys as well, which was uh, uh, very interesting. Yes. Em, let's talk about, because uh, I, I, I want to move on to, to talk about uh, your sponsors and your current stable and a good man by the name of Vili van der Merwe. But before we do that, uh, Tawanda's going to get some lovely footage and we're going to share with the viewers two pictures of, of one of your beautiful dogs called Pookie. Now, you mentioned animals, you've got a relationship with animals, and you just, like all of us, we just adore animals. But you've got some wonderful dogs, and, and Pookie's going to be a part of the show, because I, I, to wonder, as I said, we'll get some lovely footage of him. Tell us about uh, Nibakis, Pookie, Pookie, tell us about Pookie, all of them. Pookie's part of, like, Pookie's part of my life. He goes with me everywhere, and when I was very, very ill five and a half years ago, um, I got him, and, and, and the vet said to me, uh, Dr. Dieter from Petrotiv said, MJ, please, I know you try and save every dog, but put this, this dog, go and make it. I said to him, Doc, I saw something in his eye. So he was for a week on a drip, and Taryn gave him uh, 10 mils of uh, electrolytes every half an hour, and when the people see the photos, they will see how he came through. Uh, then we got 12 other dogs. One of, our, one of our older dogs, uh, uh, Noni, she, she passed away. She died about three weeks ago, but she was very old, got cancer, died very quickly, which is good. And then I probably won't have enough time to speak about all the other dogs. Tell us about Nibikis. Nibikis. Nibikis is, is, is the one that sort of is behind Pukki. She also, she just stays in the car. She loves it. And then we've got Stacks, which I picked up on a bridge. Um, we, we've got Happy, which the vet shouted, why is this dog still here? Put it, put it down. Yeah. Got that one. And so everyone has got a nice story. And, and, and I think one day we can elaborate about yes. all of them yes. a bit more yes. in detail. <laughs> but what I'll do is, is uh, I'll send those, message, uh, those pictures of, of uh, Picky to, to, to one day and he'll share them because it is a warm story. And, and how you worked with the vets and you worked yourself just to save this dog. I mean, you were saying his, um, I've just gone to blank, his, uh, his hips, hip bones, his hip yeah, bones. His, his hip, you know, he was so malnourished when he was young that when he got old, as he got older, he couldn't pass stool because his hip bones were too narrow, you know. So we took him to the Zambezi Hospital in Pretoria. And uh, there was a doctor there, I forgot his name now. He, he, Excellent. He looks like he looked like Einstein, you know, and uh, a marvelous man. And and anyway, he had to break break his hips, widen them, and everything, you know. But he's got the most papers out of any dog I know. And trust me, they ain't pedigree; they receipts. Not pedigrees, they receipts. Okay, I'm jump. We're gonna jump around a little bit, but that's okay. But, but like like Picky, the first dog, uh, Chalmers. That was the bull bull. My first horse I got blow book, you know? And then from there on it went. Uh, the first race I won was a race I organized myself and I had a half a thoroughbred. Her name was Lucky Lady, you know? I was a Dutchman, so to me that was a great name. 
and and she wa- she obviously she won because I was running against Burper as so, uh, <laughs> and that's you know that's where it all started then I came to the academy who was in the academy with you at, at the time uh, we started, started with 32 blokes uh, me Conrad Wilkinson um, Gunther Vrochemann Donovan Habib uh, uh, Paul for Mark uh, you know a lot of guys that if you look at it we were 32 guys that started in the end the last one that was riding was Gunther and, yeah. and then but there's tragic stories about some of the others you know so yeah. when people say to me I've been unlucky and I've had bad falls I've been extremely lucky because I've had some horrific falls and I'm still here. Yeah, yeah, Conrad Wilkinson, I mean, he was, that was a sad story, that one. Yeah, and, and, and Gerrit Falloon, you know. Yeah. Uh, so, so, people just see the, the you know, the flashy side on, on, the, on the TV and stuff like that, and they don't understand that it's an immense risk being a jockey. I mean... Hey, man, so I saw you the, the last fall that you had, the last serious one was in Clearwood. I think you... Clip heels that came down there. No, no, no. What, no. what happened there? I argued with a vet for half an hour. No, 15 minutes. Because it's funny, I picked, Brett Smith was supposed to ride it. Yeah. I picked him up at the airport and the bloke is crook. He's got flu. I said to him, Barney, you can't ride like this, you know. Ah, no, boy, I got one or two now. Anyway, we checked his temperature. One or two. Too high. Yeah. I picked up a ride and I knew Brett. Brett, that Brett didn't ride dodgy horses. Yeah. So this was, wasn't right. And, and I argued 15 minutes behind the start. And I, I said to the vet, I said, listen, we're not trotting back, mate. We're racing back. So I made them phone the stripes and tell them I will not let this horse's head go. Unfortunately, going through the 800, I missed the brakes so that I can be at the back. And, and I had him tight. And, and he snapped both his front legs, pulled me under him. And uh, as I say, could have been the end of my career, but... Uh, I, was, I was in, the, in the, the, the medical room with you and the doc was checking you over and I thought, this is the end of you. This, yeah, you're yeah, never a gonna couple get of times. I mean, I remember when, when I was lying down, face down, and when I turned around, I could just hear bones, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And I know the doc was, the doc was shaking his head. 15 minutes to get there because yeah. it was a big day at Clearwood. Yeah. So there was traffic. But I must say, once they stuck the morphine into me, it was happier. It was, <laughs> it's, it's an amazing drug. If they sell it over the counter, I'd probably buy it every day. <laughs> um, but uh, with all the falls, okay, every fall that I've had, I've come back. I've won a group one after that. And uh, so I must say, I count myself very, very lucky. Em, let's talk about your stable at the moment, and we'll talk about the horses and, and your vision and etc. in a moment. But along came Vili Fanamarva, and along came Dasha, the sponsor, with it. How did you and Vili cross paths? Where did he? How did you know this man? Because he's, he's, <laughs> he's got involved in racing in a big way, and, and we thank him for that. It's quite funny. Me, Vili, Kabos. Henry van der Watt and Judex Burnett, we stayed in the White House of RAU in Joburg, you know, the, the university. Yeah. The top athletes stayed there. So I was mates with Henry and I ended up living with him. And that's where me and Vili Kabos and we all became very good friends and our lives went on. And then um, uh, uh, Mr. Preggy Anapa bought. Mr. Colin Governor saw me at a couple of horses with me in the beginning. And as we all know, COVID, COVID had its effects, you know. Some, some, some businesses were affected big, big time by that. Yep. And, and, you know, Mr. Governor saw me in the end, uh, I bought out half and, and I didn't have enough money. And, and Willie came along. And I said to him, Willie, there's some smart horses here. Uh, he wants to get involved to promote Dasha and the products of Dasha because it's revolutionized the, well, every industry overseas with the horses, with athletes, with um, 
uh, with six people and, and there's a lot of different products. Uh, I think they had a lovely article in the Sporting Post and if people go on to there they can read a lot more about the products and everything of Dasha. And so Dasha really used me as a vehicle to expose the cannabis products, which is what they are. All, it's all cannabis products that have been proven overseas. Uh, Israel and Canada are probably the front runners in, the, in that. And Vili is the, the, the founder and owner of Dasha with all the cannabis products. He needed a marketing vehicle. And you know what, like I say, things work out the way they should work Absolutely. out. And, and he came along and he saved the bacon because, you know, I was in trouble financially because obviously it cost me a lot of money to, 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 to require those other horses. And then he, and then he came in, um, which is very exciting. And then there's Mr. Ashwin Reynolds. The famous Mr. Ash Ashwin yeah. Reynolds, who <laughs> won the most famous now. He certainly <laughs> is. Who won the July and another wonderful man. Ah oh, man, down to earth, great, great man. You know, lovely to train for. You've and got a runner for him on the weekend, haven't you? Yes, yes. We're going to talk yes, about later on yes, in the show. Yes, yes. Interesting runner, um, but you know, he he came along and and helped me. Uh, before that, Mr. Kuna was there, and then when they left. I said to Vili, there was a, there's a couple of smart horses in there. Why don't you buy the package? And, and in the package was Shavut, which I knew is a very, very smart horse. Uh, uh, probably quite a bit better than, than what we've seen, but luckily with Vili, he's got the patience and the vision to understand if we just get this horse, this horse right and with the time and everything, I'm telling you now, you'll be a competitor at, on bot, at bottom weight in the July. I'm not saying it'll win the July or anything like that, but you'll be a competitor. You won't just be a, a also run, also you know? Ran, you'll yeah, probably yeah. be in the betting. M, okay, so that's Vili and, and a couple of your owners. Tell Maybe us before you start, yes. where's Kabos? Kabos? Because you were the same, because you also used to have... for the best days. Yeah, we both had, we both had long, long hair, hair. And yeah. uh, <laughs> he's in Mauritius. He opened up... A, 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 the beach house. A, the beach house. Oh. Massive success. And he always said... He, want, <laughs> he always said he wants to work... Slowly, Paquette, slowly. He always said he wants to work <laughs> close to the beach. And I promise you, his restaurant was from here to that couch from the beach. Yeah, right? yeah. And... He has sold it and he's op opened a new restaurant, which is a very big success. So uh, sooner or later, I'm, I'm looking to reel him in as well. And then at the same time, when we were youngsters, there was George Herman. Um, I think he still is the youngest bloke to pass the test or bar, or whatever you say, it, to become a trader on the stock exchange on the floor. He was 17. So he's in Cape Town, and uh, sooner or later, he, me and him had one or two horses earlier on in our lives, but uh, it, 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 it wasn't like now. Now I'm training and I'm spending a lot of time with the horses, so, so uh, he's also one we're going to reel in. A lovely man as well. So that I'm, I'm trying to get a bunch of really, really nice owners. You know, there's a bloke called Gareth nicknamed Goose, uh, which we'll elaborate about probably in the next program, um, that's also going to join the stable and uh, I think he's also going to make an impact on racing, you know. I'm trying to get people in, back into the game to have fun, yes. you know, we must have fun. If You know, I didn't come back to training because I had, it's just, you know, I went to the farm for a while but I realised that this is my passion, this is my life, this is what I want to do. And uh, I've, I've, I've set extremely high goals. Um, to many, my, my goals are laughable, but no one can say they're not achievable, you know? Because yeah. I, 
I worked the Apache before he went overseas. I mean, he won the Arlington Million. Uh, he lost it in objection, but I mean, we all know. Yep. He won about three lengths, just brushed out of those. I prepared London News for the... Hong uh, Kong? For, no, for the, for the July. The July. And so, so I've been lucky to be associated with very, very good horses um, and in their preparation. So these are horses that went overseas and won races. So why can't we do it? Yeah, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a good point and a good stance to take. Now, seeing that we're talking about humans, we've spoken about dogs, we've spoken about horses, we're going to speak more about horses. But while we're on to your owners and, and Billy and, and your team, there's a very special lady that's flittering around here behind us and she's been with Pucky, uh, with Tawanda and got some lovely footage which we're going to share with our viewers. But it's a very special lady who's by your side all the time and she's... Let me not put words in your mouth. No, she's your no, shining no, no, star. No, she's your shining star. No, she's no, behind no, you. You better watch no, out. And she's behind you pouring up a, a pot I'm of hot no, tea, so I'm be make, careful. I, I make no bones about it. If it wasn't for her... You know, I, I, I wouldn't have been able to progress as fast as what we have because I am computer illiterate by choice because techno bimbo. Uh, I don't even have Facebook, so I decided that because I think it consumes too much time of people's lives and I'm still one of those. I want to smell the roses. I want to spend my time with the horses. I want to. I want to enjoy life. You know, uh, I don't want to sit on a computer screen all the time. Although it has become the platform. Yeah, there's a place for it. Yeah, know? yeah, hundred percent. But that place is a great place. It's the greatest platform of advertising and everything. But I also think if people get too hooked on the games and stuff like that, it, it can consume their lives. Absolutely, I agree with you. Yeah, uh, uh, you see the kids of today, they're just on those computers, they don't stop. Well, I'm telling you now, I'm, I'm about to bloody turn it up at the end of January. I'm going to take my phone and throw it in the bloody bushes. Andrew, sadly, he's retiring at the end of January, so he said his laptop and his cell phone are gone. He's, gonna, he, he's like you, he wants to be with nature, be with animals. I've got, got, got a nice big hammer. I'm gonna yeah, love but you know what, you know what, he can let go of all of that, but I tell you what, he's a legend and... Uh, We'll see him at the race course quite you often. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me. That's you know what. He's, no, it's in your blood. No? He's 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 one of the people. It's in his blood. Yeah. yeah. And if it's in your blood, mate, it, it, it's, it's hard to get out. Quite right. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. Okay. It's like, it's I like, branched off. I branched it's off like, for it's like years. Al, it's like Al Pacino said in the Mafia movie. You know. He keeps trying to get out legitimately because he's in the Mafia. He says, but they keep. Pulling him back in, you know, and uh, <laughs> so I think if you've got uh, th that sort of blood in you, this yeah. game just pulls you back yeah, in. Yeah, yeah. Em, what year were you champion jockey of South Africa? Uh, 94, 95, I think. That must have been a bit, uh, obviously, I mean, I'm not stating the obvious, but that was a great time. Top horses, that was top a, That was amazing, you know, it was, it was amazing. The, the year before that... Uh, because I sort of prepared myself, I knew how to win the championship. You know, I wasn't as talented as Jeff Lloyd, Pierre Stradham, uh, um, Mr. Pula and some of the guys. So I had to use my horsemanship, dedication. I'm hyperactive, so I could work till the end. And um, I kicked off the year before I won the championship. and. The 1st of August was on a Friday. I was riding for Gavin Smith. I think I had eight rides, 4-1. <laughs> Next day, uh, I think it was the second race. It was, it was uh, remember the Gold Cup was run on the, on the first yeah, yes. Saturday of August? Yes, yes. yes. So, so it was the 2nd of August that day. And I won on my first ride for Dennis Bosch. And then I picked up a ride in the fourth race. And I've got stuck over the rail, crashed, bang, out for six months. So my run came to, so the next year I prepared again and I hit the ground running. And to win it against these guys, I had to outstay them. Jeff Lloyd and then Pierre Stratum, more talented. But I thought hard work, Crunch down, stamina, luckily I'm hyperactive and 
that's where and, and, and what was very interesting was it was three months to go and me and Pierre were level pegs you know we were levels and Andrew Fortune phoned me and he says Emmy <laughs> Emmy I'm a man of the cross now I said e- you must go on your knees I said Andrew I've grown up with you please don't come with a cloth story <laughs> I'm not biting that one but I know you want to tell me something and he said to me I can see you dying to it he says he says do you stutter <laughs> I said no he says Emmy just count to three then let them go and he was 100% right you know I was so eager with the championship that 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 and the fact that Paddy Crayer my stables were Paddy Crayer and Mr. Roy Magna and I was probably one of the last guys that fully rode work and traveled so Paddy went to Mr. Magna and said to him listen the kid is burning you can see it you know because I'm traveling I'm right and and let's give him the last three months off so Andrew spoke to me like just wait that little bit they gave me off so I could sleep in in the mornings that gave me extra energy that month I wrote 27 meetings in a row sure. and I put 20 winners be- between me and Pia <laughs> and it was game over you know so 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 I just outstayed him <laughs> but yeah, pa- Paddy, uh, Paddy was a great trainer oh uh, yeah he was he was and, and Roy, Roy Magnus you know what apart from being a great trainer um, just knew, he, he, he became that. a very very good friend of mine yeah. you know, and an amazing horseman and um I think, I mean, we all know before he moved to Cape to, um, to Joburg, him and Glenn Hatt were having three, four winners a meeting. Yes. And, and obviously he moved up to Joburg for a, a reason where he trained a lot of top, top expensive good horses, which didn't last long um, because of economics, this and that and everything else. So in the end, he was left with 50, 12 or 15 horses. That's when I joined him and and we built up from there and uh, i must say what a what a gentleman what a good guy to work for knows his bloods inside out i still press on his button every now and then and uh, you know and mr magna what a pleasure and and i was actually a, a stable jockey for charles laid in bloom and Charlie just sent Amos there, you know. So, so, <laughs> so Bloom was Bloom was picking uh, good good pickings for me, um, but you still had to travel and you had to travel hard. But what an exciting year it was! And and when I won it, I remember the night. Uh, I walked into the jockey room and they all sprayed me. And I lived down in in um, uh, they're close to Alberton. Uh, and everybody came to my house, you know, and I had a small house, like not a big place. I was interviewed one day by, uh, someone came to interview me. And uh, obviously he's been to the other jockeys' houses and these oaks are living in mansions. And, you know, so the bloke said to me, are you in between houses? So I said, yes, I got one on my left and one on my right. You know? <laughs> so, so, yeah, I am in between houses. But uh, that is it. But anyway... Jeff Woodruff, everybody came that night. Oh, we had a massive party. And Oak slept over. I, I, my bed was taken, so um, me and my girlfriend, we slept on, 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 the, on mattresses. And Jeff Lloyd phoned me at about 6 o'clock the next morning. He says, well done, Wiki, you know. Uh, how are you this and that? So I said, Gov, I've got a bit of a hangover. I've just woken up. So I said... I got my lady next to me and I got my shoes. So all is okay. You know what I mean? As, as, as long as you got your shoes and your lady, you're all right. You're all right, yeah. But, that's but uh, uh, a memorable evening that money can't buy. Money can't I can imagine. I can imagine. MJ, tell me about a horse. We're gonna, as I said, we can't talk about all the horses because obviously time is against us. But one horse in particular that a lot of the racing public are watching, and I've spoken to you, and I think Andrew has off air several times, 
He's a horse that you've got high hopes for, and he seems to be going about it the right way, but he's just not putting his head in front. Tell us about Shavut. What are your plans you know for what, what are you doing with him? An Anton explained it very well um, a while ago. Brilliant horse, mind very immature. Okay. Okay, so although his athletic ability is there, he, his mind is still not. And but I think we're on the right track now. Okay. Anton mentioned to me a special bit which I got, and um, me and Vili decided we've just given him his first H um, horse sickness now. Yes. So yeah, he'll have off for a little bit, but uh, then we'll bring him back. And you know, there were so many speculations: does he stay? Doesn't he stay? What is this? That? Whatever. But I mean, he ran third in the Gravel 1900, behind that good filly of uh, 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 Gareth. Uh, Gareth. Yeah. She, uh, she, she's a keeper. She's, she's a, keeper. a keeper. Now, listen, you don't run two or three lanes behind. She's a keeper if you over 1900, and you don't stay. Yeah. <laughs> so I said to Vili, you know what? Blank, let's blank everything out. Uh, one day I was sitting in Matthew, Dr. Matthew Leisha's uh, uh, doctor's rooms. He's the man that took care of me when I was traveling so hard and everything. And he always had beautiful quotes on his table. And one of them was, don't become a pinball on other people's opinions. So me and Vili, we gave him the whole sickness now. We've got a set plan for him. Um, we will bring him back. We will decide if we give him a run before the Michaelmas. Personally, I think we'll probably take him straight into it. Um, he'll come in exactly at 52, not under sufferance. And uh, I think he'll be ready by then. And I think people will see that this is a serious racehorse. Yeah, but you know, like anything with horse racing, patience pays off eventually. And if the horse is immature and it needs a bit of time, you need to give it that time. You know, there's some owners who say, well, it's too bad. I don't care what time must run. Yeah, you, you know, Vili, you, you know what, Vili... Does Vili give you, does Vili, Vili give you free reign? You just yeah, pack no, up. look, Vili said to me, MJ, Vili stayed with me for four days. Listen, he's a businessman. He stayed with me for four days first to check out is this likely good enough, you know? And uh, when they left, his wife, Karen, said to me, Billy's happy. That made me very happy. Yes. And he said to me, MJ, you're training the horses. You've known them from a kid. You're not going to tell me how to scrum or to run a business. And he's not going to... So if we want to gal the horse or, or whatever, um, we may... Eat. Me and Uncle Brom, who's a very, very big part of me and the stable and I think I'm the first stable in the world that's very unique to have my grooms have got a team name Nkalagata. Okay. And what it basically means is 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 confident proud men. So everybody knows us as Nkalagata, you know, which is which is great because I think the grooms spend a lot of time with these horses and that's why I, I, I know it's expensive and, and but I've got uh, two horses per groom like the olden days because I, I'd like to keep them out for more than one and a half hours in the morning I wait for the tractors and everything um, so, so I think Nkalagata is unique and it's still going to become famous yeah, but a, but, a groom can make or break your horse in the stable well of yeah. course you know what they were with them all the time and, and, and I had to sit down with them the other day and we had a lack of chat because there's a very good vibe in the stable. I believe, that, I believe in energy and I believe that the energy in the stable must be right. Everybody yes. must be happy, you know, and, and we're succeeding in that. And I said to the grooms, got them all together, I said, you know what? The racehorse, that animal, that's all our, if it wasn't for that animal, none of us would be here with jobs or anything. So 
they made it, I made it, they understand that the horse is the right. most important part of our business. You know, I always said I want to, the way I want to train is, I want to get the best out of every horse, out of every athlete, in the kindest way. Place them in the best way. And if they're not good enough, find them a nice home and yeah. so on. Um, but that's our, that's our approach. And amazingly that you said earlier, patience. I've spoken to quite a few <coughs> top trainers around the world and two words came, came about. Discipline and patience. And I never knew you got to be very disciplined to be patient, you know, because yeah, yeah. theoretically after Shavut's run in the 1900, you could have maybe gotten into the July. Yeah. Would have been completely the wrong thing, you know, he just wasn't ready for it. And, and Vili fully understands, we'll give him a bit of a chance, you know, let him, let, let him find his head and we'll have a horse that will probably participate as a four, five and six year old. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's my ultimate goal is not to rush them, but they train on and become competitive horses. I mean, look at Rainbow Bridge. What a beautiful story. Um and, and I think it's important to, to give them time, not to give them too much mileage as Sean Terry says, and, and, and take it from there. Do you know and and I'm happy to say it in an open public platform? Because I often get people coming and saying, you know, they'd like to get involved with horses. How do they become owners? Blah blah blah. And what advice? And you know, not that, not that, not that I'm saying I must be the advice giver. Everybody asks us an opinion. For me, if you're going to get involved as an owner, the advice or the words I can give to the owners: I'm an owner, you're an owner, we, you're an owner, is let the trainer do his or her job. When you go to the dentist and you've got a sore tooth, you don't say to the dentist, right, take this device drill here pull that <laughs> you pay him to do the job no. so yes of course every owner wants to get involved and, and give an opinion and be with their horse and that's fine 100%. but at the and, end of the day and, and, and the decision you know must lie with the trainer he is what you're paying him to do or he or she you agree? Yeah, it's, it's like that great advert on tv the the, the, the plumber and the golf swing you know, the yeah, <laughs> yeah 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 it's a tremendous ad i love it you know one day the one day the bloke said to me i was riding horse at turfentine he says, listen, it was a mile. Drop him out to last. And then as you're going up the hill, creep up so that you swing for home, three, four off them, you know? But sit last first. But don't run wide. So <laughs> you're getting a bit I thought, so I'm going to just shout to Pierre in front of me, Pierre, my owner asked that I must move up. So please, can you get out the way? Can you get out the way? Can you get out the way? <laughs> and I was a bit of a cheeky shit then and... and I said to him, sir, with all due respect, I ain't going to tell you how to run your business. Yes. Let me ride those. Yes. It won. They won. They won. And, and that's the end of the day. The of the and day. just to all the race goers out there and to the people, a trainer, owner, and a jockey, try not to contact them two hours before their first runner. Oh, that's because you finish work, you get home, you've got to be at races an hour before, you've, you've got to shower, get ready, everything. And, you know, I love it when friends phone me and, and, uh, and I'm very transparent and everything. It's just during that time, oh, you know. Yeah, what's well, good, it's, yeah. It's, well, I, had good. It, I had it yesterday, I had it yesterday. <laughs> yeah. One and a half hours before the first race, my phone was next to the bed. I went to go and have a shower. I went to have a cup of coffee to get ready to go and do the day's work. Five missed calls within an hour and a half of the first race. It's the worst time to and phone you, And somebody. you're probably the worst tipster in the business and they're phoning you. No, well, they were all, fa they were all but family. You know what, but you know what, you know what, my uncle and my... But, 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 but you're, saying, you're saying now, uh, uh, bringing people to racing and, and, and whatever, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be part of a... Um, well, let me just look on my phone so that I can. While you're doing that, while, you, while you're looking in, in, at your phone, you uh, did, obviously didn't listen to the TV show yesterday. You no. say I'm a bad tipster. I found that horse that Dee's Dynant owns, Gareth Fenzel trained. I forget the horse's name. It's got the blue, light blue and white colours. 
for a place. I think it paid five rand eighty a place at nearly one. So I'm not that bad. Give me a little bit of credit. Yeah, or even a blind chicken picks up a oh, bloody corn tea sometime. Yeah. Are you right, ready? Right, yeah. Now, what are we There's talking? something very unique coming in the racing business. Yes, okay. talk about that, please. It's going to be advertised properly before the launch. It's going to be launched extremely professional. Um, the man behind it has put a tremendous team together. And this is going to be a game changer in racing. Because this is going to be a platform where people can go onto and MJ Woodendale will have a page and I will put there in detail how I think my runners will go. Okay. You know, and, and you know what? That is a lot easier than, you know, let's say I win the first race and you say to me, uh, Tell us about the rest, the rest of, of them. You know what? The best is it's called Bullseye Racing. You go to Bullseye's Racing and Bullseye Racing, and you can go to my column, and I explain in there why I like yours, this and that, and everything else. Jeez, that's which, a good idea. Which it, it's going to be amazing. I tell you what, people must buckle up because this is this is going to absolutely. I think this is going to be a game changer in the racing industry, and and also on the on their web page up front, um, I'm lucky to be part of it. We're going to have a program every week in conversation with MJ Wendell. Okay. And I'm not going to talk on it to promote my stable or to boost myself or, or this and that. It's all about past stories. You know, I want to, uh, uh, I think on the, on, on the launch, so every week there's going to be, you can click on it and you can watch the whole program where, where I'll be talking you know, they'll set up a camera for me at home and I'll just be chatting away. Uh, I mean, the first story is, as I, I, I said, let's bring back the race goers that have just left. I'm going to speak in detail about London News, his preparation, how he ended up in Hong Kong. Frankie was supposed to ride him. Douglas White became a lead. You know, I'm going to explain every week we're going to have a different story, different topic. There's going to be a lot of humor in it, you know, the, because... These stories must be told because, I mean, this yeah, is, no, this no, is lost a proper racing story. Lost in history. Yeah. And, 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 and other stories, you know. I mean, I was a light. I was 20. That was the time Garth Puller gave me a proper hiding. And he actually borrowed me his Nissan 1400 Bucky. And for the weekend... I was the driver for Michael Roberts, Jeff Lloyd, and Felix Gucci. They used to, and it was in Cape Town, they used to sit on the back, beautiful weather. Um, Michael Roberts changed his aeroplane ticket 18 times. Sure. He was supposed to fly back Saturday night. We put him on the plane Wednesday morning. But that'll be one of the stories that'll end me. And you know what? I want to bring back, we've got to bring back some humor into this because after all, we're here to enjoy it. Yeah. And I want to attract people to enjoy it, you know, and, and understand more about the game. And, and it's an enjoyable game, this. It's, it's an absolute magical game that comes from, we all know it started from the beginning of man because horses were the transport and then they raced against each other and everything. And... First, we want to, in, in the launch, I want, in that interview, I want to tell the story, which is a great story about London News, and attract the, the race goers that remember that. And then I'll elaborate a bit more about the fun side of things and everything else and whatever, and, and, and how to get involved. And uh, like I say, I'm not going to be there to promote me, say, oh, bring the horses to MJ Wurrendahl or whatever. I'll tell people how to get involved. They can choose whoever they want. And, uh, but all I can say is bullseye racing is going to be something unique, something special that we all are going to go, but 
why haven't we done this before? Yeah. And 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 you know that's that's how magical industries mm. grow yeah. by by bringing in something that's invaluable to to the race goer. To you want to attract people that's not just in yeah. racing, but you want to explain to younger people there's a lot of fun in it. There's a fun side to it, and uh, after all, it's a bunch of athletes competing against each other and there's betting on it. Nowadays there's betting on everything. I mean there's betting on cricket, on overs, on rugby, yeah. this, that, everything yeah. else. Um, I yeah. think a couple of I lost a couple of Bob <laughs> on 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 the Good final of the Curry Cup yeah. with that last minute uh decision so, so I'm not gonna elaborate about that, but it certainly was interesting, you know. Um, what uh the sad part now is that is is just we could still sit here and talk all day, but unfortunately we've run out of time. And, and our producers Jeez told like us that so quickly. Uh, uh, and we know that you enjoy talking and we enjoy every, your every word. But uh, I, I, I'm, we're going to have to start wrapping up. But there's two quick things that I, I just want you to touch on because I think we've got five minutes left. Right. Nicholas Patel and uh, Young and Jokwe. Uh, Wiseman and Jokwe, your two two guys that have been instrumental in your, or you've been instrumental in their career. Touch on them before we close up. Yeah, yeah, and and, and don't forget the cornerstone, uh, Uncle Brown Malerba. Uh, I phoned Mr. Ferraris the other day, and I said to you, Mr. Ferraris, I found someone that's grumpier than you. <laughs> no, nah, son, he says that's impossible. Who's it? I said, Brahm Malarva. <laughs> he laughs. He says, yes, he is a miserable whatever. <laughs> so, so, so that was pretty cool. But Nicholas, uh, Nicholas was about to give up and, and join his dad in, in, in the wholesale of their business. And he's got great hands, patient. And I said to him, come. And I'm busy teaching him. And it's going to take a bit of time, you know. So in the meanwhile... Yes, I'll be using Anton. Marco will be riding a lot, lot for us. A little bit of Craig Zaki, but a lot of top jocks. And but Nicholas will also be riding and learning. And Simon and Jok, uh, uh, Wiseman and Jokwe, had three months left. They gave him three months. Okay. And they said, make or break. And he came to me, and I said to him, Boyke, look, I'm. Most of my extra rides or is going to go to Nicholas, but. I've got one horse for you. This is going to kick you on the way. And bang, you rode quick star. And Vili said to me, that'll be a great promotion for, for the cannabis industry to promote Dasha, where we gave, gave him his first winner yes. and ultimately saved his career. And, and that is what it's all about. But saying now that we're running out of time, this is what's going to make bullseye so nice. You're going to be able to every week get onto that. Side. Get onto, and you know what? I might be talking for an hour. There's going to be no limit, you know. Sure. And and it's going to be interesting stories. Um, it's going to be very transparent. Uh, so please, people, keep your eye open. There'll be a massive advertising campaign before it's launched, but uh, certainly going to be a big game changer and in the cannabis industry Dasha the cannabis is going to be also a game changer in many people's lives and from the health to many other cannabis products that, that as I say go on to that article about Sporting Post um, on Willy van der and Dasha and it explains a lot of the products and everything. And I mean, it's good for our game. It's good for our game. And, and, and you know, uh, 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 Mr. John Costa from Clava Flay, uh, uh, him and Willie got together and Willie got a couple of horses. Some of those are running on the weekend and it's gonna be interesting. Em, uh, thank you. Sure, we could, as I said, we could sit and, and chat for yeah, hours. I could, and say, hours. I could sit here and tell you stories for a whole day. No, but absolutely. that's a nice thing. On Bullseye, every week, 
be you know, there's going to be something, update. and you know what? You can literally watch it at your own time. Yeah. Well, Andy, I think uh, you got Mark Dixon's hat on. Yeah, well, he left it. I, I told think him I'm to go and fetch it. You might steal it. I might steal All it. All that's yeah. left from us to do is just to thank you for, you know, just to just come and enjoy it. What have we had an hour together and, 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 and share your knowledge and an share hour. your stories? It's been an hour. Can you believe it? It's been an hour. We've had so much fun. Einstein was right, eh? <laughs> When you're enjoying life, time flies. Time flies. But uh, we wish you all the best. We will have you back again because there's no doubt, you know, you, you, you we'll have you on your on the, on the show and, and it's just great. We wish you and Taryn and your horses and your owners and absolutely everybody all the best. And uh, we know that we can tap into your knowledge. We know that if we want to hear about one of your horses, you'll always tell us and share it with the public, with the punters yeah. and the public. And not so, an hour before the races. And not an hour, an hour and a half before the yeah, races. Yeah, not yeah. contact you. I agree with yeah, you. Yeah, and... and, 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 and the nice thing is with Bullseye, people are going to see the direct yeah. comments from me. Yeah. And, and uh, this weekend is quite interesting. We've got a, we've got a couple of first-timers. Okay. And I've been a bit soft on my bay on, on the young horses, you know. So, so they, were, they were a little bit underdone. And uh, I learned that you've got to have them a little bit better prepared. So uh, I'm not saying they'll win. But these horses will run nice races because they are decent horses. And of course, then there's a great get Carter, Tommy the Kid. Those kind of horses are coming good. They they're improving. So you know we can never ignore the Udendal horses. That's the point I'm trying to make. Tommy the Kid, Taryn bought him. Okay. I I, I was okay. looking at a filly called Leopard Lady, who you know hasn't missed the place in the yes, last four yes. runs, and uh, she went to look. There was this small little horse. She saw that he was uh, a late foal. And she bought him for 15,000 Rand. His brother the next year was by Silvana, was sold for 450,000. Sure. He's out of an Irish mare by Galileo. And you must see him now. You'll see him on Saturday. 14 is too short for him. But it's, uh, it's you know, he's one of, the, one of those big horses that needs ga uh, game fitness. Yes. Or match fitness, as, as Vili would say. Em, thank you very much. Uh, you've got something to add? Yeah, we must... Uh Go through the tips, yeah. Yes, we go through the tips. Keep you, him. You, you, you want to keep... Okay, keep well, him on. Are you happy to stay with us another 10 minutes while we quickly go? Oh, mate, time. no worries. Okay, let's go. Uh, I can I can help earlier on. Okay, let's go. Let's <laughs> put, let's put gold end zone in the first. Yeah, he's a... Uh, this is Ashwin's okay, horse. But this is yes. Hollywood, Hollywood Pets, Scottsville, Sunday. I, yes. I asked Uncle Ash to come up. Um, okay. And... I don't easily ask an owner to fly from Cape Town to come just watch your first time. Sure. He's a, he's a very bright, smart horse. Um, Marco is basically a stable jock, but me and Anton had an agreement about this horse quite a while ago where he's, he's, he was quite a difficult horse. That's why he's only running now. And uh, he's got a one half cup blinker on. Certainly will give a good of account of himself. And uh, the other horse in the race... Uh, it's way too short for him. He's, he's, he will need the outing. And then um, the two first timers for Villy. From well, well, let's, 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 okay. let, let me put you on pause for a second. Okay, okay. So that's, that's your feedback. That's M's feedback and contribution for the first race. So we'll include Gold Enzyme and everything then. Sylvan Parker's needs further. What did you tip and tell me why? I tipped Grey View. Well, he, he started off, uh, they put him over a bit of ground. But since he's gone back to a sprint, he's in. He Proved a bit. Somebody's dropping their <laughs> <door. laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you've gone for Graveview. Oh, yeah, Graveview. Uh, I, I, I respect this horse number 10, Bugsy Malone. Finished second. I think he can improve. But there's horses for you, friends, to keep an eye on. Graveview, Bugsy Malone, and Gold Enzyme. That's race one. Race two. Uh, let's talk about the second race, Andrew. I'll start with Andrew uh, M, if you don't mind. Uh, well, you haven't got anything in this race. Andrew, what have you tipped and why? Uh, I tipped Deputy Marshall. I think he's, he's there and thereabouts all the time. I mean, there's a bit of a crapshoot this race, uh, as far if, as I'm if, concerned. A bit of a what? A crapshoot. What is that? Can you play craps in America? Throw the, throw the, card, throw the cards in the air and, yeah, uh, you know, whichever number you catch. So like what I it means... You were no, it's a, no, 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 no. It's a... It's, it's, it's a Obviously, it's, it's a, a very dust, open race. It's yeah, a dust game, yeah. yeah. Okay, crap shoot. I've learned something new. Deputy Marshal, I'm with you. I think he'll win. If he can't win, he's going to battle. I respect Paul Lafferty's horse for the places. Third race. Okay, let's start with you, M. Canatonic. Yes, uh, Canatonic is named hmm. after very one clever. Of, named after one of the cannabis strains. Uh, 
very smart horse. Um, it's his first outing. He'll be a bit green. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he runs a very good race. And I certainly won't get a shot if he runs over them. Expecting him probably to run third, fourth, but as I say, he's a smart horse. Wouldn't be shocked. Okay, Andrew, your a selection, because I made it a two-horse race. We respect MJ's comments, but uh, on form we're talking, running rifles and Sekulu. I like that. Yeah, those are the two. That's, that's, those are the ones I went. I went Sekulu first, running rifles second. Yeah. Let's move on to the fourth race, a maiden plate over 1,200 metres. And uh, strangely named or differently named, what, what is a Granddaddy Purple? Who's Granddaddy? Granddaddy Purple. What a lovely name, isn't lovely it? Lovely name. Uh, another strain. Of, okay. of the cannabis industry, okay. Granddaddy Purple. Um, uh, uh, as I say, we're naming a lot of horses after the certain strains because Vili has got a, a, a broad platform of, of people, uh, a, a very big base of about seven, eight, seven point eight million people or something, and um, it's going to be. You know what? With using these names, we might be bringing other people into the into the game where the one bloke says listen i'm gonna go for granddaddy purple be, because that's that's my strain or, yes, or yes, this or yes. that you know um out of the two i think uh he would edge out the other one he would edge out canatonic because i think he's got a bit more speed canatonic probably gonna be better over a little bit more ground but once again big big runner Okay, lovely. Andrew, I, I th again, it's a first time at Granddaddy Purple, so I respect M's comments and we'll include this horse in our quartets. But Coin Spinner, Cape Eagle, One Shot Wonder, Pastor Wally, those kind of horses for me. Thought yeah, they. I've gone One Shot Wonder and I think Cape Eagle might be the, the, the danger. I see Gareth Ryder. It's good, he's, he's come back after his... I just want to say, bad, uh, bad these ankle. horses that are, you'll see them on, on, on Sunday. They're very good looking, beautiful horses and the only thing that's going to be against them is... Th the race horses, yeah, you know, sure. uh, but as I say, it's always better to have a bit of, to have a run or two under your belt. But yeah. but still, I'm I'm very excited. Experience counts. Race five. Who have you tipped? And uh, ideal on. act, ideal act. I think uh, it was a very good run last time out, and I think Dean Canamay's horses are starting to come good again. Okay, ideal act. We're not arguing much because I do quite like ideal act as well. We're just giving you a microwave version of what we like. It's uh, been a long show. Ideal act looks to be the one that sets the standard. But get Carter, Tommy the Kid, these two horses, they can't be ignored from trifectas and quartets. Certainly not uh, uh, get Carter. I uh, probably got him at his peak now. Last time we were running against the hot shot, hot pot favourite. And, and they were going quite fast. And obviously I said to Warren, you know, you keep an eye big that you can. We should actually have ridden him to run second because then he probably would have run second. But, you know, we were, we were close to him trying to beat him. And at the speed they were going, he was stronger. So definitely. And then the other one, um, I think he will need further. I've kept him for two years, which probably cost me about 200,000 Rand because I think he's a very smart horse that's going to grow into a nice stayer. So whenever he runs next time over ground, please follow him. Okay, then Andrew, we move on to the sixth race. Thank you, MJ. Thank you for that. I'm big in the camp of uh, of uh, Corinne Bestel here in the sixth race. Flying the Star and Soiree, I think they're both going to run very Yeah, I think races. they'll run one too. Okay, seventh race. Let's move along. Interesting race. Here, I think uh, trainer Peter Musket's going to dominate. Bawana and Winter Flight. But horses like Captain Opie, like that loose Prince Crash, all have chances too. Yeah, I like Captain Opie. I think he's coming back to himself. Nathan's stable has come good. Uh, I worry me, Gabriel Peters came off this morning, dislocated his shoulder. So I don't know if he'll ride. Uh, yeah, maybe Mr. Ash is coming up for Captain Opie, eh? Yeah, he's also got Isn't Captain that's Opie, that's yeah, right. That's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah and he's also yeah. got Banzai Pipe. No, that's no, a different no, set Then he's got to beat uh, Light That Loose. I think those are the two for me. Captain Opie, Light That Loose. So Ashwin is coming up. Yes, he's yes, yes. Like he's coming. I thought he was coming up for me, but by the looks of things, he might be, <laughs> might be coming up for someone else. But anyway. As <laughs> no, long as he's here, that's the most Mr. Ash, you're going to have fun. 
Master of the North, the two horses in the last race I like are both owned by the International Racing Club and their partners. One is Carl Hudson, one is Justin Snape. Master of the North and Love the View. I think those two are going to dominate. Yeah, I've gone Love the View, but I think it's a, a bit of an open race there. I think Huston Manana, it took so long to, to win his maiden, but I think quite often those horses come out and, and, and run well again. And I think uh, my mate Rob Haswell, never one to die wondering, yeah. uh, just for the penny, I think he's, he's hoping. Okay. It sounds, sounds like Mr. Harris is talking from his heart and not from the full. <laughs> so, uh, so be wary of that. <laughs> now, this is going to be the quickest microwave version of the news we've ever heard. Okay. Speak. Luke Ferraris, first winner in Hong Kong. Yeah, for his old man. Brilliant. Good. Robin Scott, you would have known. I mean, late Robin Scott. Now yeah, yeah, I was actually, I was actually, I went up there uh, just before they moved. And, and, and Mrs. Scott gave me a lovely clock. We're on the left hand side, I'm on a filly called Equem, okay. which won the Phillies Guineas. Okay. Um, yeah, so it's a. Yeah, he's a loss, yeah. He's a loss, Robin Scott, he's the Scott family, our thoughts and but, are with you. But he had a, you know what? I think he had a great innings massively successful gave us great pleasure in this game with yeah. many many great horses he bred he certainly did uh, andrew gold circle new board of directors we have a new chairperson new board, that? Uh, belinda scott is a new chairperson uh, and a new board and then and a new board yeah so okay. i think everybody is quite happy at the office okay uh, all the awards are done in south africa all the different racing jurisdictions have had their awards and uh, all winners deserving and great uh, celebrations yeah, we had a we took a few uh, kicks from from the, the Equus Awards. Yeah, you know. well, not everyone was happy, but anyway. Gabriel Peterson, you say he, 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 he popped his shoulder this this morning. Yeah, so, but he said he, he thinks he'll be back. The breakfast at Summerfelt, please. We always urge you to come and have breakfast at the clubhouse. International owners, you know, I was talking about uh, yesterday uh, about the international owners. We're we getting owners from uh, golf, Gerica, uh, tennis, Gerica's uh, son from Germany. Uh, the Poets Corner Syndicate from Ireland, Mauritius owners. It's just wonderful that the international people are racing in South Africa. And yeah, and, 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 and Dasha, um, the cannabis, obviously, really is quite big overseas as well. Yes. So there, there's people from, from other parts of the world too who is following, who's following and be interested in our racing, which is a, which is a great plan. And... I've got uh, one or two aces up my sleeve as well with, with new people coming on board. And uh, the more foreigners we can get, the better. There's little owners that it's easy for the little owner to get involved in the game. There's syndicates, there's partnerships, small shares. You can own a race or get involved. And the last thing in the news department is track and ball at Gravel. The finishing post is about to open. What is the date of that? 22 September. 22 September opening at the track and ball finishing post, Gravel. Any free breakfast there? There will be plenty free breakfast. Well, then we can line up. Don't look for me at the office because I'll be in the tote. Sorry, what is track and ball? Track and ball is the gold circles betting arm, the bookmaking business. All right. Track and ball. Fixed odds. Uh, Fixed odds. Uh, Right, 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 right. right, right. And they're opening up at Gravel right next door to uh, what number uh, Avondale? What number uh, Mitchell Crescent? 15. 15. Yes. 1 5. 15. Yeah, the old world. betting world. Oh, well, good. That's something I learned. There we go. So you can go and have a meal and, and, and go and uh, have a punt. And don't forget, if you want to have a good bunny, Hollywood, 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 they also, uh, Anthony got me on board with them, so got to mention them, you know, otherwise Anthony will will be (laughs) kicking me in my shins. We're closing up in the next minute and a half, but we must report and and, and thank our sponsors, and our sponsor are MGT Solar, Andrew, we know what they are, but we want to share it with the viewers, MGT Solar are a renewable energy company that owns a cryptocurrency embedded in an immutable blockchain and this is to raise funding to build solar plants uh, to satisfy the ever-increasing need and demand for clean green energy that's basically what mgt solar are all about well green energy is the next big thing i mean and uh the sooner the better as far as i'm concerned it's basically it's, it's probably the future and and I, I don't know a lot about it but we all know it's the future and and i'll certainly uh have a look at it so to what they will of course put the top and tail you know the mgt solar uh video clip and you'll be able to enjoy that there's website there's eddie's contact details there's everything two things very quickly 
It just shows you in this industry, having sat and enjoyed this time with MJ, this industry has so many good stories and so many good people, and it's just lovely to have this platform to share with the public these interesting people and these interesting stories. Racing rules is what I'm trying R to say. Racing rules, definitely. You agree with me? You know what? 100%. What we're going to do is... We're going to get the people to love the game again. And, and that's our objective. And, and, and once COVID is uh, done its dash, we're hoping to fill the crowds up again and see the stands full of people. But for the meanwhile, the coverage are great. And uh, enjoy, people. Enjoy. That's what it's all about. Enjoy it. From Warren Lenferner. Andrew Harrison, our very famous and lovable guest, MJ Wurtendahl, we thank you. Please be safe. Thank you for your support of the racing industry. And we will always see you in the number one box from the race course. Andrew, Warren and MJ bid you farewell.